Hello and welcome to YHTV's Trinity of Life. This is episode 56. I'm Christina Suzuma, your host for this program. Thank you so much for joining me again as I continue to explore the wonderful world of healing arts, meditation, therapies, and the many modalities of helping each of us find balance in our individual journeys. We are always excited to meet those who are on the leading edge of creating change on this planet. Today, we will be speaking to the creators of Holy Crap. <laughs> what? <laughs> you might ask. <laughs> Stick around and find out. Um, and now, at any time during this live presentation, you can feel free to ask a question or make a comment by scrolling down on your screen and typing the comment or question into the box. Now, be sure to click Submit so I can actually read it to our guests. Or if you prefer to speak to them personally, you are very welcome, and we invite you to dial into our conference line, which is 323-476-3672. Your ID is 607-393-POUND. And if that went by a little too quickly, not to worry. Those numbers will show up on the screen all during the show. Now, we are honored to have um, this very special couple with us here today to share with us the story behind Holy Crap. <laughs> Let us uh, welcome Corin and Brian Mullins from Seashell, British Columbia, Canada. Hello, Corin. Hello, Brian. Welcome to our show. Hi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> is very this, exciting. Uh, is this your first online tv interview <laughs> uh, yes, yes it is, it is. Yeah. Oh. yeah oh good so we're very excited you're, now you're de-virginized now <laughs> <laughs> well welcome it's it's definitely a, a great pleasure and honor to be with fel fellow canucks <laughs> yeah. thank you so tell us a little bit about this i mean uh, every time of course um i have to say i was introduced to your cereal at the Natural Products Expo West this year. And uh, you had a lovely gentleman by the name of Lyle uh, who wow, was introducing it at that show. And I have to tell you, there was a lot going on. We were running around doing interviews. And, and suddenly I heard, holy crap, literally. And I stopped. Uh -huh. It stopped me in my tracks. And I thought, wait a minute, I haven't heard that here in the States for a long time. <laughs> it was like... You know, being from Canada, we tend to hear it a lot because we tend to say, holy crap. Yeah. I was like, Wait, yeah. it must be a Canadian behind me. And I actually stopped and turned and looked. And I overheard him speaking to, to someone else. And I waited. And, and then I realized that he was holding a bag in his hand with the words, <laughs> holy crap. And I was, I, I mean, literally, I didn't know. I, I was like, I am now. I, was, I, I stood there and went. What? <laughs> you know. What is, yeah. And so, you what know, is I, that? I, yeah, well, like, what is that that he's holding that's named Holy Crap? <laughs> and not only did we have the greatest chuckle, but I said, we need to cover this. And, and, and lo and behold, it happened to be your wonderful cereal. And uh, lo and behold, it was from Canada. And he was starting to tell us about Canada. I'm going, no, 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 we are Canadian. We are from British <laughs> Columbia. <laughs> you know, we are from the islands, you know. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's really such a great pleasure to have you on our show. And um, so, you know, everyone um, is very, some people have heard about your cereal here in the U.S. Some people have not. Um, so that's why we're bringing you on the show today. Uh, can you... Tell us a, a little bit about your your own history and background before we get into the cereals background. <laughs> uh, well, since right. Corin made the, uh, I guess this was the twenty first version of her recipe. I think she should talk about that. Uh, right, but before well, you talk about that, Corin, can you give us a little bit about your your backgrounds as individuals? Uh, well, before we, I started with the uh, cereal. Um, I had one job. I worked with Air Canada as an in-charge flight attendant, and I worked with them for over 30 years. Wow. And then we took um, early retirement, and, you know, you can only hang out on the beach so much. People go, oh, great, hanging out on the beach. But, you know, you come home, you <laughs> clean everything, you do the garage, you do the housing, and then you go, well, what am I going to do now? And I always wanted to have a little... Um, uh, cafe. We always going to call it Bag Draggers Cafe. And this originally started with, I wanted to do a granola, but as you know, baking things is not always the best thing for you. 
Mm-hmm. So um, at the time, just before that, we were in Montreal and went through the ice storm in 1998, which was quite, um, I don't know if you remember that. But one of the things we came out of that with is that you really needed a survival food. You needed something that was healthy, that was going to keep you going, that you didn't need a lot of stuff to add to other than just water. And that's mm-hmm. basically when we came to the Sunshine Coast, we realized that here, being a, it's a fairy town, so you, need, you needed something here on the coast that you could put into survival kit uh, that you could do that with. That all that you would need is water mm. other than, you know, what's in a survival kit now. Plus, my nephew, who has horrible allergies at school, uh, their kit was full of peanuts, uh, chocolate bars, uh, you know, spaghetti stuff like that. Well, he would have had nothing right. uh, for him. So that's how the cereal kind of got its start. And then I started making a cereal, and uh, I kept trying different things. The first ones were, like, really god-awful or just terrible. And by the 20th um, version of the cereal, it worked out. It was uh, tasty. And right at the very beginning, I did have a little bit of salt and sugar in it. But uh, our customers, you know, they'd say, you don't really need to put it in. It's nice just the way it is. So we took that out right at the very beginning. I mean, I think it was within a month um, we took out the salt and the sugar. And in our cereal, there's no salt, no sugar. As you know, it's uh, non-GMO. Uh, it's vegetarian. It's lactose-free. It's gluten-free, which is really important today. Mm-hmm. So that's just a little bit of, um, of how it, it started. Mm. Other than when we, then Brian, when we went to the first, uh, our market here on the Sunshine Coast, we thought, well, let's just do it, have some fun. And so we thought, okay, let's, let's give it a try see what happens so the first it used to be called happy foods (laughs) h-a-p-i so the first uh weekend that we were there was was actually in may first weekend of may um 2009 we sold about 10 bags and we were just thrilled just i mean it was absolutely fantastic that wow you know look at this i made 100 bucks (laughs) (laughs) so then brian that day um uh, I think a customer of ours had called and said, oh, man, holy crap, this really works. <laughs> so we were looking at the, you know, and I, I like baking. I like to bake a lot. And um, I used to bake all kinds of apple pies and things like that in my past life. Um, so he said, come on, let's do it. Let's put it on the bag. I said, no way. I'm not going to sell anything that's called holy crap. Are you kidding? Look at me. <laughs> you know, I, I'm not going to do it. So he said, come on, let's just do it. It's only for the summer anyways, you know. If we're only going to do this for a couple of months, so let's just have some fun. So besides, they're tourists. You'll never see them again. And I said, okay. <laughs> I said, okay. So the first day we came out, like we used to do our own labels. We used to do everything ourselves um, on our printer, you know, make, put the, print, the labels out and everything. So the first Saturday, uh, when I got home, we had sold 100 bags. <gasps> Same recipe. Exactly the same. There wasn't anything different other than the name. And from that day forward, I've never looked back. It's all been uphill from there. <laughs> That's so, so it's, wonderful. Yeah. So here I am selling Holy Crap. And now I'm known as the Holy Crap Lady here in Seashell. <laughs> <laughs> so now everyone looks over. So goes, it's a lot of fun. There's Holy, Holy Crap. Lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a Holy Crap Lady. Go. Talk to her. <laughs> Uh, no, and that's just a little synopsis there. A lot more has happened since then. Oh, but. yes, yes, which we will definitely dive into. Now, yeah. Brian, what was your background, Brian? Um, I, I would say it was marketing communications. Hmm. And um, through that, we got involved in environmental education in the province of BC. We developed a thing called the Green Team. We had 400,000 kids in the Green Team. Wow. Yeah, and then we yeah. got into food labeling, and um, it morphed into this particular business. So when the internet was taking off, we had figured out a system to label food over the internet and approach mm. the big manufacturers in the U.S. about it. And uh, uh, the president of one of the biggest cereal companies said, uh, Brian, if people knew it was in the cereal, they wouldn't feed it to their kids. So mm. we're going to fight food labeling, and that was in 1998. So, um, and they've done a job on it since then. Look what happened in California, the amount of money they, you know, they spent to stop food labeling. Mm. If it was, if it was so good, why are they trying to stop it? You Mm -hmm. know, like, uh, 
it's, it's just and now with social media uh, the apps that are out there you can uh, scan a barcode and tell whether the product has any GMO in it or not yeah it's pretty amazing isn't yeah. it yeah so it what, well, I guess what's happened to the big companies is that people through their activity like yours and over the social networks they're able to really change policies within companies almost instantaneously mm. Mm, yes yes so well, we have to band together <laughs> Yeah. Oh, it's definitely. Make change. For sure. It's, it's, yeah. it's uh, what Corn hasn't talked about, her most amazing accomplishment, so that within two years of her selling at a uh, farmer's market, she was on the space station as an approved food. Yes. Yeah. Um, so for the last six months, our food has been up there as holy crap cereal it was packaged by NASA. Uh, it took 14 months of evaluation to put it up there. Mm. And one of the big things, uh, Corin developed the cereal for me. I had allergies to uh, wheat dust and things like that. So one of the one of the requirements with NASA is that it had no dust or crumbs. So our cereal is, if you want to eat it on the space station, it's something you want to eat on Earth as well. Mm-hmm. Well, that's that's magnificent. So you had allergies as well. Yes, Brian uh, has. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I can't take sulfites on grapes or those kinds of things. So I was kind of the canary in the mine shaft for the uh, <laughs> for the, uh, the testing food system. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, tested on yeah. you, but not on your. Did you say yeah. grandson? Yeah. <laughs> the sacrifices we make. Yes. Oh yeah. Yes. Brothers. Wow. Yeah. Now, now, uh, now, uh, I had heard earlier in our pre-show, Corinne, you were born in Spain. Yes. Were you raised there as well? We uh, moved from Spain. I was born in Valencia, mm. just right on the on the coast. It's lovely. So we went from there to France, and my brother was born in Paris. Oh my! And then we moved to um, I think we were seven. I was seven, and then we moved to Calgary, Alberta. <laughs> wow! <laughs> my mother cried for seven years. <laughs> well, we lived in Calgary. <laughs> Now, was this she, because of your parents and what they did for a living? Uh, well, my father, um, he liked to travel. Mm. They loved traveling. That's wonderful. And, of course, at that time, in the uh, early 60s, you know, Canada was, uh, you worked a day and you could live a year. That's how much money you made. Mm. Mm. So that's what happened. So I see. packed up the family and uh, friends of ours, and all eight of us came over to Canada, the where the streets are paved in gold. That's how that started. <laughs> but actually, they actually flipped a coin. So heads, it was going to be Canada, and tails, it was going to be Australia. <gasps> yeah, so here we are in Canada. Amazing. Boy, and, boy yeah. am I lucky, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, Brian, you were born and raised in Canada? Yeah, I was, I was born in Montreal, and I think the big um, thing that had an impact on me was as a, as a, as a teenager going to Expo 67 in Montreal yeah. and oh seeing my. all yeah. the cultures from around the world and spending yeah. about four months going through them day by day and really getting a global perspective. Mm. And with our cereal right now, what happens is that um, we have that, it's what's called the overview effect. Because we've been on the space station and we've talked to the astronauts and, and um, they, they look down and they say the world has no borders. So food has no borders. There's nothing from space. There's just geography, right? Mm. So we put those borders in place. So our personal philosophies have changed a lot since, um, I guess, being more sensitive to the planet as a whole. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I tell people now, I was at a meeting last night, and I, you know, people were bitching about something. I said, you know, we're in the first class cabin on Spaceship Earth. Mm-hmm. Yes, we are. So let's, let's get with it, guys, right? And realize, you know, the prosperity that we have has to be shared. And we have to figure out how to do that. Right. Oh, thank you yeah. for saying that. That's that's lovely to hear you say that because, you know, we, we just, um, the society is just uh, like so much gratitude for what yes. we have, we, you know, yeah. literally. Um, uh, and unfortunately, the only time um, that people realize, it's an old saying, you know, until it's gone. Yes. You don't realize what you have. At Thanksgiving, uh, we were asked to share at, around the table. And what I said, what I was so thankful for hot showers and flushing toilets. Well, I thought I was nuts, right? <laughs> what is she talking about? Yeah. Well, it's true. You tried yeah. living. You tried living like that for a couple yeah. of weeks. See how you feel about your hot shower. There you go. Yeah. And, and flushing toilets. I, I will yeah. have people saying, and toilet paper. <laughs> oh, that's, that's about. Right. Yeah. 
You got your flushing toilet. Do you starts. need the toilet paper? <laughs> yeah, actually, actually, NASA, NASA was uh, actually NASA was worried about that on the space station, right? What the effects yeah. of the cereal would be? Yeah, ah. yeah, because it's pretty complicated up there. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. Well, you know, I hope that yeah. uh, you know that they they care for their astronauts enough that uh, being regular is yeah. <laughs> one it's of the most important, important things. It's very important, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, when you asked about my background, it's mostly been in marketing communications and, and before retirement, it was in environmental education. Ah. Um, so that's, that's where we were coming from when we created this serial and it, and it all happened by accident. None of this was planned. Mm-hmm. No. Uh, it's, no. It's a, mm. it's a, a global diet change is taking place and it's a wave of change. We just happen mm-hmm. to be in the right place at the right time to come up with it. Mm-hmm. And corn's being very modest. We have the largest survival kit on the planet. We have enough food put away here for 300,000 uh, meals. So that's, that's what we've got on the coast at all times in case there's an earthquake problem. And most places should have some kind of food supply. If, uh, you know, years ago, cities had two and a half days of food supply with the warehouse system that they have. Yes. But now we're told with the just-in-time system, they have less than 18 hours of food at any one time in any major city, how it's shipped in and put. They don't want it in warehouses. They want it directly from the truck to the shelves to the consumer. So that system uh, has put in place something that if anything goes wrong anywhere along the line, people, yeah, think we're only... We're only a couple of meals away from anarchy. If you don't have fresh drinking water and food for three days, do you think you're going to pay attention to the uh, glass in front of the supermarket? So that's one of the things that we've we've seen. We've been involved in emergencies around the world. And if people aren't fed, uh, they lose patience very quickly. If their kids are crying, it's it's an impossible yeah. situation. Yes. yes, absolutely. So what we think people really have to take their own responsibility, and I know they do in California, uh, by the, the drills that they run and people have their own kits and those kinds of things. We'd really, it, we've been without water and power and food in an emergency. You don't want to be there. And for a couple of hundred bucks, you can protect yourself and your family. Not necessarily to buy our stuff, but what we are doing, we've been asked by the uh, Canadian and American military to come up with combat rations. And they want them, um, they, they use a nitrogen wash that kills all the oxygen in the bag. So they last for a couple of I years. I see. So yeah. we'll be doing that for people as well. But right now our shelf life is, is it says a year, but it's two to three years. And, and a lot of people keep it as an emergency kit. A bag of this cereal and some water will keep you alive for a week. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, because that, that's yeah. something that I, I was going to ask um, also is because uh, the shelf life, if, yeah. if this was vacuum packed, if it yeah. would have a longer shelf life. It, well, actually our hemp seeds are vacuum packed, the hemp heart seeds. And uh, once they're out of that seal, and that's what we're doing now, we're going to add the nitrogen to it and extend that shelf life. But really, what Corin discovered with the chia seed is that it's got a three to five year shelf life on its own if it's stored properly. Mm, And it's the same with our hemp seeds. We can store them for three to five years. But once you break them open and get that hemp part out, once you get that kernel out, then then it's got to be vacuum packed and sealed. Mm. And that's what we do. Oh, my. Well, yeah, but we have to meet the requirements with NASA and the Canadian Space Agency of, of being up there for a year with no refrigeration. So we're working on a, a great number of things. And uh, if you think about it, uh, soldiers have a right to to eat great food as well. Oh, and yes, re- yes. And I mean, yeah. I mean, yes, being in California, we have earthquakes every day. And mm. I hear they're getting worse. That's amazing. That's every, amazing. Every day we have <laughs> tremors and after tre- oh, tremors. Oh, wow. And then we do, supposedly the quakes are getting quite strong here in yeah. L.A. Um, because of certain things in the environment that are happening that we're all learning about. Uh, so, yes, those emergency kits, uh, very, very important to have. Water yeah. and, you know, water is, is, especially here in the desert. L.A. is a facade, right? right? <laughs> yeah. It is yes. truly a desert. No matter how yeah. much green you want to put on it, it's artificial, yeah. right? Yes. So, yeah. and people don't realize that, uh, seeing that it is such a, a, a huge city. Um, but, you know, water, water, water. And then, of course, your food source of your vitamins yeah. and nutrition as well. And, and less is more, really, when you're under those circumstances as well. Right. So yeah, that is stress. so wonderful. Yeah, the stress is unbelievable, and it turns out that food is really important mm-hmm. that uh, it be handled 
properly. The, the Red Cross does an amazing job. Look at what's happened down in the States with the emergencies on the East Coast and Oklahoma. Americans love to help each other and get out there, and they're one big community, and when they're faced with a crisis, everybody bands together. So sometimes when we hear the right wing in the U.S. talking about guns and this and that, yeah. that's not what happens. People get together and they work together in an emergency. They don't start shooting yeah. each other. That's no, what we've they discovered. Don't. No. Um, so I have a, a question. Now, were you both uh, raised with healthy, pretty well-balanced foods? I, yeah, I was. I, <laughs> I don't My mom was. Yeah, she, was, was. A, she was, she was um, I, b being raised on a farm, my mom in Spain. <laughs> They, oh, yes. um, they ate really well. So lots of fresh fruit, vegetables, all that stuff. Not mm. a lot of meat because, you know, yeah. meat was once a week, fish, lots of fish. It, came, it became a little harder for her when she was in uh, Calgary, Alberta, because they didn't have a lot of the um, yes. products that they had, let's say, in Europe. Mm -hmm. Mediterranean at that, diet. At that time, Mediterranean exist. diet, like, you know, a lot of fresh tomatoes, all that stuff. So I was raised in a home, uh, very creative, my mother, and she was an excellent cook on top of that. So mm -hmm. I was very fortunate that way. So How about you, we Brian? were very healthy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I grew, up, um, I grew up outside of Montreal, um, and apple orchards were next door. So we had a farmer's market really all the time as the crops came in. I remember yeah. stealing pumpkins and apples from the orchards as a kid and being chased by the farmers. Um, <laughs> We, we weren't allowed, I remember my mom, we weren't allowed to drink Kool-Aid or eat hot dogs or anything like that. So, um, you know, now it's a real treat later in life, right? Freud, don't keep the hot dogs away from them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I have one once, once, once a year. But, you have uh, a hot dog once a year. Once a year, yeah. yeah and, and I look at it suspiciously all the time. Well, Are you sure yeah. you know what you're eating? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what's in there? Well, I, I do believe yeah. that uh, they're coming out with healthier hot dogs these oh, days. Of course down they are. Here. Oh, oh, yeah. 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 And you know what? Everything, everything in moderation, too, right? You can't. Yes. Everything has to be in moderation. Yes, yeah, absolutely. I think, yeah. I think that's what's lost with um, what we're seeing because we're on the forefront of uh, this diet revolution. Um, yeah. The companies and the people that talk to us, um, it's, it's, it's really, it's the customers who are doing this. It's not us. It's not our marketing. They get a laugh with the name Holy Crap. Then they get a smile on their face a couple of days later. Um, the GI uh, diseases that we're helping with, uh, yeah. We're now involved in clinical studies. We, uh, the Cancer Society didn't wait. They initiated our serial in a, in a trial right away about six months ago. Mm -hmm. um, we have uh, phenomenal results with doctors prescribing the serial now for yeah. people. So it turns out that, that, that the, the diet problems in the U.S. are a lot deeper than gluten-free. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. They are. Uh, you know, um, on, we have a show on Tuesdays called The Magical Medical Tour, and we interview many, many doctors, and it just seems like so many areas of um, issues that people have, from cancer to you know gastrointestinal yeah. issues, etc. They're yeah. they're not uh, uh, just you don't just hear of them now and then. You hear of them every day now. Yeah, yeah. every day and, until you know we get we we we've got we're spending so trillions of dollars on cancer research. And really, cancer prevention is all we can do at this point. We can't even cure heartburn. So, well, part of know, it is, is, yeah. is you know, and, and it comes really down to, um, is it a cure that we're looking for? Or is it shifting an individual's, uh, an individual's choice of shifting their way of life? You know? It's right. Yeah, it's which prevention. Prevent it starts it. there. You it, want to prevent it. Yes, you which have to I, I do it. believe in in yeah. the in the last what forty decades, right? Um, yeah. The medications. I mean, nothing against medicated. It's there for a reason. But yeah. people are have gotten these quick fixes from. I mean, they people yeah. won't even tolerate a headache anymore. Yeah. They won't tolerate it anymore as a sign yeah. to say, mm -hmm. "Why am I getting this headache?" Maybe oh, I'm right. dehydrated, which is usually number one. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know, yeah. why do I keep getting a reoccurrence of the flu or nasal, uh, you know, nasal congestion? Why is that? Right. Yeah. Instead yeah. of seeing why it's causing, it's like, oh, well, just reach for the next 
pill or or drink, uh, you know, like a cough syrup or whatever it might be. Yeah. So we keep covering up as opposed to really seeing what it is. And yeah. then as we continue to cover up, well, what happens? You know, next thing you know, it's like, you know, for here, um, as uh, one of our nutritionists said, most people here in the U.S. to actually do a bowel movement every three days oh my God. is regular. Oh, oh my God, God. that's awful. That's, that's so that's toxic. Serious, do, you see, do you see where there's oh, a God, major yeah. disconnect? And then all eat our the cereal. toxins <laughs> are happening. I know, we need some holy crap. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, that is so toxic. That's so bad for you. Uh, absolutely, but, but yeah. it's about the education. I mean, that's why we're doing what we're doing here on YHTV. It's about educating yeah. people, creating the awareness, you know, and yeah. then it's the individuals have to make their choices themselves. Well, People make the changes for themselves. We're we're involved in a a, a, a huge um, a branding exercise next week with a major retailer, mm. and um, their their target audience with their drugstore chain is uh, boomers, yes. and uh, yeah. in, in terms of that age group, our age group that we see, we have almost twenty five thousand likes on Facebook. And, um, it's, it's not, it's, it's Gen X and Gen Y. It's the millennials. We're finding that the 30 year old woman wants to feed her child good food. That's yeah. where it's really changing is in the food that the kids are being fed. It's too late for some of us. You know, we've been within the system for too long, but it's not for the kids. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. think that's where the change has to start. Now, our food was actually consumed, um, by the Aztecs. Uh, during pregnancy uh, in order to pass uh, it on to the fetus. And it turns out the omega-3s and 6s yes. go through. Yeah. And women yeah. eating our cereal are reporting um, a no allergy reaction with their, with their children for breastfeeding. So there's a phenomenal amount of things happening with people eating, you know, what, what other, our competitors call birdseed. Well, no, yeah. there, there are no. some... <laughs> Well, that's yes. okay. Salads are <laughs> rabbit food. Yours are bird seed. And I, I, I have to be really honest with our audience who might have never seen your cereal. And maybe I should pour some out here. Um, yeah. It does look like bird seed. <laughs> it does. It looks like well, something. They're, well, they're seeds. They it, are seeds. They they're are chia seeds. seeds and hemp seeds. And there's buckwheat in there. And yeah, we're, it's got we're your working. raisins, we've cranberries, fed, apples. We've, um, cinnamon. we've taken. The, the stuff that's spilled on the floor, we've taken it and fed it to chickens, and it's improved their omega yeah. threes and sixes by a thousand percent. Oh, I'm sure. So, so this pure. was the most, yeah, chia seeds were the most valuable crop on the planet until the Spanish burned uh, it down when the conquistadors came to uh, South America. They used it to pay taxes, they used it for religious ceremonies, they used it for everything because they understood they had to live through droughts. So, and I think that's what happened um, to the native Mexicans is that they were starved of their food by the Spanish and they were starved of their water and, and they had a few bad years of drought and that was the end of them. So this food is actually, you can store it for a couple of years. And I think that's what's really important about it is that if you've got to put chemicals into things or you have to process it, you really have to be wary of what the effects are. Share with our listeners... Um why you chose these seeds and these grains to put together in this cereal. Um, you know, the nutritional values of them. Oh, yeah. Well, the chia seeds are, you know, very high in your omegas. It's fantastic protein calcium. And it's really, really, really important that we all start looking at eating foods, uh, proteins that is plant-based versus animals. Um, for a lot of reasons. It's easier to digest. Um, you can eat a lot of it and feel really good uh, versus eating, you know, tons and tons of meat on a monthly base. Um, so I think there's one thing that's really important about our cereal, that it is plant-based yeah. protein. Very important. Mm -hmm. The real answer to your question is that... Um, when Corin was putting the cereal together, her brother had a little soup company, so she rented oh, yeah. a little table in the back and was, uh, making, up her, was making up her cereal. And the chief scientist from um, uh, Dole Nutrition called us. They actually changed yeah. their whole product um, line based upon uh, negotiations with us. And 
he said, how, how did you get a perfect protein out of that cereal? How did you guys discover that yeah. formula? And Corin said, those were the tools the guy handed to me at the factory to mix That's it. That's what I had to work that with. That was it. That was it. <laughs> one scoop of this, one scoop of that, one yeah. scoop of this. And it tasted great. And that was it. So they spend hundreds of millions of dollars trying to figure out how to do this artificially. And Corin did it naturally. Right. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that it was a chia-based cereal. That's yeah. basically mm, it. Yeah. Mm. And, and really yet, good. isn't it interesting, because no doubt you never grew up, uh, as I had never heard of chia seeds until the past few years. It was like, yeah. what? <laughs> okay, we have the quinoa, we have this, we have to know, what yeah. are chia? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, we first, well we chia first has saw, been around a long time. Yes. Yeah, we first saw the results at the University of Toronto, uh, where they did studies on chia. And yeah. the, the results were so phenomenal that the doctors that did the study formed a company called Salba to try and corner the world market in Chia. Mm. So yeah. there have been attempts by people all around the world to corner this food. Uh, it can't be done. It can be grown. Yeah. It's, it's tough to grow it. The countries have to have um, a specific kind of radiation that has to be on the side of a mountain. Uh, volcanic soil is best. Um, the rainfall has to come at exactly the right time. So we really deal, and Corin's major job is, is securing those agreements with the farmers and getting the best quality ingredients because they change from year to year, from crop to crop. Crop to crop, and, and yeah, depending yeah. on the weather, whether yes. it rains, doesn't rain. So you have to really um, look at what you're doing. So we've risked enormous amounts of money with farmers around the world um, to do this. And uh, it's, the, it's the Wild West out there when it comes to chia. Yeah. Uh, the, our other major ingredient, uh, you know, that is a godsend is, uh, is the hemp. Yeah. For, you know, thousands of years we've used hemp oils. We've done these kinds of things naturally. And I think we're getting back to something. And thank God that they grow it legally here in Canada. So as far as the eye can see, we're growing hemp. We've doubled our production this year. And we've taken one of the ingredients out of Holy Crap and uh, called it Mary Jane. And uh, that's actually... Yeah, I'm going to hold up a little bag. There we go. There's Mary Jane. And this is only hemp, is that correct? Just hemp, yeah. Just hemp. Hemp hemp you eat. Yeah. But it's really, it's really, it's really fascinating. People come up and say, can I get it across the border? It's so funny. (laughs) (laughs) I, but I, I, I do believe yes, can. the Canadian uh, Canadians were ahead with the hemp. Almost, oh, yeah, well, definitely. like 15 years ago, I yeah. remember yeah. Uh, at one of the expos, there was a company from Alberta that had yep. organic yeah. hemp. It was beautiful. It is. It's yes. fantastic. Yes. It's so good. Okay. So I believe, I mean, yeah. that the Canadians were ahead <laughs> oh, yeah. with that this product. Is, it's so good having hemp. Just throwing it into your yogurt. Just you know, just a tablespoon and away you go. It's really good. Yes. I, I just want to hold up also your bag of holy crap so everyone can also see that. Okay. <laughs> so so here's the, the holy crap, which is which is your original, right? Yes. Now yes. now <laughs> it's 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 been really funny because uh um uh, everyone, of course, stops at the word "holy crap" because yes. you know it has its own connotations. Now, yeah. Corinne, can you explain to our audience the "crap" part? <laughs> oh, it's uh, just an acronym for cranberries, raisins, <laughs> and we say apple pie because I throw, I throw, like I said, I throw everything in my apple pie, and that was one of the things. And I like the mix. I love cranberries. I like raisins, uh, and it has cinnamon in it as well, and apples. So it's it was really easy, actually, to put it together. Um, <laughs> that part of it, the fruit of it, the fruit part, yes. was very good. Yeah, well, I have to tell you, your fruit uh, compared to most other companies and other cereals, yes, um, it it really. When I was putting your cereal through the test, <laughs> through the Yoga Hub yeah. test, um, oh, yes. I had actually uh, popped it into our um, uh, what was it? Our oatmeal. Yeah. One oh, day. good. Yeah. I, a lot I of people put like it into it the way. oatmeal, and yeah. the way your fruit yeah. plumped up yeah. was yeah. amazing. 
just amazing. We all stood and looked at this this oatmeal and went, <laughs> wow, look at those cranberries. Yeah. Wow, those are yeah. real cranberries. Yes. Oh, yeah. We're amazing. very, I'm very particular. I mean, everyone that works with us, everyone that works in the factory, everyone that works in the administration in the office, everyone, everybody gets a bag take home every week uh, or two for their family. And everybody eats the cereal. Fabulous. So we are very, very particular about what we buy, um, where it comes from. We get all the certs from the companies, and we're very happy with, um, well, the cranberries are Canadian. They're from Quebec. Mm. And raisins are from California, and the apples are from Washington State. And mm. they're yeah. first class. They're so good, just on their own. Well, even so, your, your yeah. apples, I mean, when any of the oh, dried so fruit, yeah. when it, it yeah. actually plumps up. They do. And, yeah. and yeah. people don't yeah. see this unless they're yeah. actually cooking it in something where it really absorbs oh. and you know, well, hydrates yeah. back to its full size. I well, mean, it was brilliant. What, oh, and what we do is uh, we make it either the night before. Mm -hmm. And so when you have, when you get your cereal in the morning, it's really plump. And I make it yeah. with uh, water. Yes. So I make it with water. I'll make a big batch. Like I'll make the whole bag for the week. But let's say I don't have that. So I'll just make it for the night before. And then in the morning, then I add to it what I want. Then you can put in all your nuts. You can put, a lot of people say, well, why don't you have nuts in there? Why don't you have this? Yeah, yeah, so I said, yeah. people like to add their own thing. You know, yes. I, for me, I would put in there uh, apricots. I mean, I, sure. you know, everything, blueberries, all that stuff. Yes, I'd have maple yes. syrup, you know, flavor. But people, everyone's different. So this is a great base. It gets people eating hemp. It gets people yes. eating chia, which is really important. And it gives them, yeah, the, and the buckwheat is very high in iron. It's great for men as well, for magnesium and manganese. So, You've got this. You don't have to worry about it. It's already made. You can put in your yogurt. You can put anything you want into it. You can throw it into your quinoa mm -hmm. if you're doing something uh, uh, sweet. Or you can put it, like you say, into your oatmeal. And I tell you, it's hard to get through those two tablespoons, you know, because men always go, oh, two tablespoons. I'm so full. Well, <laughs> you know, it, ex it expands. It goes to nine times the size. So if you take that and you put it in your oatmeal, you're going to be full until one o'clock. I guarantee. Well, I, I got to tell you, yeah. I, that two tablespoons is pretty easy for me. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned a lot of energy bouncing on my ball here. <laughs> oh, oh, I know. You've got those. Aren't those great? Oh, they are those. great. They are yeah. great. But I also wanted to hold up your skinny bee. Uh -huh. And I'd, uh -huh. I'd like you to talk a little bit about how skinny bee came about. Well, the, a skinny bee has no fruit and a little bit more a chia. So mm -hmm. this is wonderful for throwing into your smoothies. Very good. Um, we have a lot of savory uh, recipes online. Because we have two uh, complimentary ebooks that you can go into and download whatever you want. They're great. They're mm. absolutely uh, fantastic. That's so skinny the recipes. B, sometimes we say skinny Brian because he's lost so much weight. <laughs> 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 yeah, Brian. Brian. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Good for no, you. No, it was hard. It was hard work. It was riding a bike every day. So he did. you know, people. Yeah. I yeah. think anybody in the world realizes that you can't take a pill and suddenly get better. You have to work at it. Oh, yes. And, the, and yes. the food supplies is the first thing and the water supply yes. as well. You take care of those two things and you've got, and you've got a head start yeah. over anybody. Yeah. I always, when people say, well, you know, or eating organic is expensive and buying, no. you know, organic products is expensive. And I say to them, well, if you actually make a list and actually track yeah. your groceries and what you're spending it on between possibly the alcohol, the uh, sugar-based drinks, whether it be soda oh, yeah. or even fruit yeah. juices, because yeah. we take fruit juices and we dilute them. Oh. We dilute them. Smart. You know, yeah, so smart. that, you know, when yeah. our child, when my child was growing up, that's exactly what I did was, you yeah. know, when, when we went to a restaurant, he'd like apple juice, but can I have a quarter cup of apple juice? And I filled right. the rest up with water yeah. and yeah. that's it. Um, and also if we can begin to eliminate a lot of the dairy in our diet, yeah. uh, the milk and put it towards, yeah. you know, good water or mm -hmm. other, other nutritious drinks. There's a lot of chia drinks out there now. Yes, there are. You yeah. know, so. Yeah, we can, we, we've got, um, we've got wild chia as well. And uh, people are starting to uh, use it as a gel. And as yeah. a gel, you can add it to anything. My favorite thing of all time in the morning now, Corn will probably kick me for this, but it's a fresh <laughs> glass of orange juice 
with um, the chia gel mixed in. It's like a, I call it a uh, bubble juice. Yeah, it's like it's called boba. Yeah. That's yeah, really good so it goes it goes yeah. down really, really nice. It's it's absolutely yeah. fantastic. So what we're seeing and what Corin's talking about, I think the big revolution in terms of people have to be given recipes, and we decided to do this for free. We've been approached to do obviously books, stories on our yeah. business success. Uh, we've been approached to do a cookbook, um, but we want to get it out right now. So we've yeah. taken those best recipes and put them for free on the internet. Um, and people are using them with great success. As Corin says, you, you, we've got savories now. You can you can eat it throughout the day. It's become breakfast, lunch, and dinner for people. Mm-hmm. A lot of people eat holy yes. crap at night. Yes, they yes. do. They love it. Yeah, they have. They feel better in the morning, obviously, and it really works for them. Especially have, if it makes them a regular lot of in the morning. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It makes them regular well, in the morning, and it, it yeah. does oh, helps it cleanse does. your yeah. system. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. It's like a little and tiny scrub brush going down. To, to yeah, do exactly. Thing, you yes, know? wonderful, yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Um, uh, Brian, could you tell us a little bit about um, holy crap in space? <laughs> um, I know oh, that's one of your yes. favorite topics. <laughs> you know, yes. we have we, we have great, companies Brian that has spend- a great line. What's that? Oh, you have uh, yeah. a great line. <laughs> which is coming yeah. out with this week. We're saying uh, we're saying to people how we beat Richard Branson into space. <laughs> into space. <laughs> so and and well, how we did is that, take that uh, what what happened um, uh, four months after we were broadcast on television in Canada, we had two and a half million people that watched us on a t- TV show called The Dragon's Den in Canada, where billionaires invest in your company, and we were the most successful picture ever we never concluded a deal with them because the night the show ran we did a million and a half dollars in online sales so we never needed any investment money (laughs) bravo the dragon's den is similar to your shark tank okay the the same same people on abc tv um and 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 that really we've been on the show three times wow we're the poster child for the show around the world yeah. And uh, the BBC is using some of our stuff. And what it comes down to is that at any age, anybody with enough knowledge can really contribute to society. Mm-hmm. I remember the Picasso story. You know, he guy said, can you sketch something out for me? He sketched it out on a napkin. It took 30 seconds. And he said, well, I'd like half a million dollars for this. And the guy said, what are you crazy? It took 30 seconds. He said, no, it took right. me 60 years. Uh-huh. Right. Brilliant. So yeah. it took us. We started this business. Uh, we were 58 years old, and <gasps> that's the that's the peak time for CEOs in the U.S. Uh, to be running major corporations. So we were right on on. We were, <laughs> right we, on we timed it right. <laughs> yeah, but we didn't. We didn't yeah, know this would we didn't to think us. About it. We came. No. We moved to the Sunshine Coast after retirement to take care of Corin's mom. And yeah. this all came out of Corin taking care of her mom. And uh, so, I, I, you know, as you look back, it was really a miracle in a way um, mm-hmm. how this has come together. But anybody can do this. And people are doing amazing stuff in the U.S. with organic food and organic growing. And I think yeah. to answer your question, uh, for a diet for New America, the farmer, uh, Joe, I can't remember his name, Silas, I Shall think, I, anyway. Shall I- Sorry, go ahead. What what he said, if you think organic is expensive, try cancer. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So if you take all the money that's put into cancer research and everything that's going on, eating organic food to try and help protect yourself is the very least expensive Mm -hmm. thing that you can do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's not just cancer these days. It's not just cancer. Oh, it's It's a lot of other things. Yeah. And, And, you know, what's really sad, people, like, sometimes on commercials, if we're watching the the television they're advertising pills to take to stop you from getting heartburn so that you can go eat these foods that are you know oh, deep yes. fried it's so bizarre like yes. just don't eat the food that's right <laughs> you know? just, why but yeah just don't eat the food then you don't have to take the pill because it's like a vicious circle right exactly yeah. but, but other, isn't that it's it's so funny it's with everything though i have I have uh, friends and, and, you know, acquaintances that are on, like, a cholesterol medication. Oh, And wow. it's like, yeah. you know, um, just start altering your diet a little bit. Yeah. And, oh, no, no, no. You know, I just take this pill and it brings it all down. It's like, you don't understand. Yeah. <laughs> your body 
body is saying, stop, stop. stop. Yeah. I'm on yeah. the way to a heart attack. Meanwhile, you're taking this pill that is clogging up your kidneys and everything. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Right. Yeah. And what the people don't realize is what happens when those pills are no longer available, but let's say in, a, in an emergency. Yes. And so what do you do? What do you do then? That's right. Like, you know, let's say you can't get your medication that you, you know, forced yourself into taking. You can't get it for three months. That's what are you going to do then? Excellent point. Excellent well, point. We, yeah, we did, uh, Corin, we went to food safety meetings and food security meetings yes. over here wow. on the coast. And uh, when we brought that point up, the pharmacies changed their policy. They have a just-in-time policy. So they can ship it in from the mainland in a day, so they keep nothing here. So what what about all the critical heart medications in an emergency? Yeah. Well, we've got them to change it. So now people are allowed to have a three-month supply. Yeah. Oh. Yes, just That's in case. Thing. Yeah, just yeah there you are, just there have to remember to keep it in places like their cars and <laughs> exactly, <laughs> and no. not just at home. Yeah, right? oh, that's my. right. Yeah, you know. Yeah. You know but, it was, you it's know hilarious. I, I have to tell you, it's hilarious living here in Los Angeles. Um, uh, you know, we have you know a great supply of water here at my home, mm. and we have some yeah. food and yada yada. Yeah. And one day, I just stepped back, and it hit me for like over the head. I was like, hmm. I'm pretty prepared, but you know what? Good. It's yeah. all in my garage. Uh-huh. My garage. Yeah, well, I live in a three-story house. My garage oh, is the wow. bottom story. <laughs> right, right. I'm going. You, a good lot. That's not going to yeah. do me any good down there. You know. Yeah, yeah. So best to keep outside. Uh, there in you a go. Barrel in a barrel or something. That's where my friends they keep their stuff. We keep it downstairs yeah. as well, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In the, the larder, so that's where we keep our goodies. No, we always we keep a we keep a kit in the car. I think Canadians. Yeah, know that's true too. We always keep a could, box you, in the car. You could die here in the winter in a snowstorm on the highway, right? So yeah. people have to know what to do to survive. Right. And uh, it was really interesting when we go to meetings and uh, we talk about emergency preparedness. People say, "Well, we say, well, what happens if someone passed away in the house?" And and they go, "Well, we'll call an ambulance." I said, "Well, what happens if there's no ambulance?" Well, there's always an ambulance. Oh my God! No, no, but there yeah. is a, no. The people have to be prepared yeah. to take care of themselves in, a, in an emergency. Oh yes. Um, and there's the most basic things that people think that they can sit at home and the government's going to come and save them. Oh dear! And it's, it's not, not going to happen. It's not because the government doesn't want to do it. They're no, not capable yeah. of doing it. People yeah. have to take care of themselves. They've got to have their own water filter. They've got to have their own medications. They've got to have their own glass prescriptions. You know, for eyeglasses that get Absolutely. broken, right? So there are a whole bunch of things that we can do. And I wouldn't worry at all about an earthquake down there. It's, you know, you can't change fate and you can't change what's going to happen. Look at the poor people in the Midwest, right? Oh. Uh, 2.9 mile cyclone center. Yeah. Rip that's through. amazing. Like that's three miles across coming at you. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. you know, you said before we all know why this is caused. Well, geez, we've had sunspots that have hit that have impacted right. on the magnetic shield around the world, which has impacted mm-hmm. on the uh, jet stream, which has impacted on the weather, which impacts on the humidity. Mm-hmm. So we're all connected to the sun, and uh, our cereal won't grow without it. That's there an you go. Thing. So. <laughs> I don't, I don't, a lot of us won't be growing without it. <laughs> no, we won't. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Not just the food. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you brought something up interesting, Christine, in the pre-show about uh, about kids. We have uh, a doctor who uh, is diagnosed ADHD, who uh, claims that the cereal is helping him, who's now using it with his ADHD patients. So if people can balance yes. their blood sugars, um, mm-hmm. it's, it's going it's to amazing. solve a lot of the problems that we're running into. So with kids in school, they can't eat carbohydrates. They can't have a slice, a slice and a Coke at lunch and expect to be awake at 2.30. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That's why down here yeah. they've banned all the soda vending machines. Well, they did. They did here, but then they replaced it with a a, (laughs) vitamin water water drink that had more sugar in it than the Coke had. No. If people if people were to look at these uh, really quote unquote healthy drinks, if you look at the back, usually the sugar is up around twenty five. Like it's really really high. Yes. It's never under twenty percent. And even the electrolyte drinks and things like that. Oh Um, yeah. yeah. If they're not careful, yes, I agree. 
Uh, but yeah. uh, coming to your point about uh, ADD, ADHD, we have a, uh, a faculty of ours. His name is Dr. Kenny Handelman. He specializes, uh, he's a um, psychiatrist, I do believe. He specializes working with children with ADD and ADHD. Uh, coming from that background himself, he has a very good understanding. And uh -huh. we asked him, you know, about the more naturalistic approaches with that. And at that time, through his research, it was proven that the omega-3 and 6, those Help. very yeah. much so. So yeah. now when you're saying yes. that, you know, your, um, yeah. your acquaintance basically has used this in his professional, uh, yeah. um, how do I say, uh, referrals basically to no, your No, he cereal. posted it. He, Christina, he posted it on our Facebook page. Fabulous. So, yeah. We've yeah. had to we've had no. to take off almost two hundred letters of miracle cures with the cereal, and it all comes down to just people eating properly. It's not our cereal. Uh, yes, yes, it helps yes. because it gets people back to normal. But if you start eating properly, you can solve a lot of the um, problems that are now being solved with anti-anxiety mm -hmm. drugs in the U.S., for instance. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. But it comes, yeah. You know, I mean, what we're feeding our bodies. This is this body, this machine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Temple. It's, um, it's amazing. Home. It's amazing. Yeah. And, and yeah. I, I always uh, sort of, I always say, you know, we have cars and and we take such good care of our cars. Okay. We That's have right. oil yeah. changes. We have yeah. we change yeah. the filter. That's true. You, you know, and, and I use the yeah. car yeah. because yeah. men can also relate very well to it, yeah. right? To you know, we flush, <laughs> we flush the tubes. And if we don't yeah. keep that up, that thing dies. And we have to invest yeah. a lot of money. That's right. Right? Yeah. Yeah. We keep yeah. it clean, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. the car gets parked in our garage yes. and gets a rest. Yeah. This car, yeah. this car, car does not get us. a rest 24-7, yeah. 24-7. And why don't we flush it out? Why don't we clean it out? Why don't we put the premium gas in it? <laughs> yeah. That's right. Right? That's very good. Yeah. Why don't yeah, we put that's... the supplements? Like, you know, if you have an older car, you have to put the gas supplements in, right? Why don't we yeah. do that with this incredible computer that we run every day 24-7? I can tell you why. I can tell you why. What we've discovered is that some of the best foods on earth don't taste very good. They're bitter. Yeah, they're, they're bitter. They're stringent. Yeah. And they're really good for you. We're really lucky. Um, our stuff tastes great, and that's where the change starts, right? Yeah. So with, with any kind of food, I think it has to taste great before people will even try it or eat it. But, you it's, know... They won't take, like Buckley's cough medicine, it's that kind of thing. They won't take the really good stuff because it tastes terrible. But you know what it is? I don't, I believe it's a societal change in consciousness because, yes. like, I raised my child with the bitters, with the okay. things that yes. are sour. Good. Like yeah. lemon, yes. you know, so you squeeze lemon juice into a glass of water. That is right. true lemon water, right? Yeah. Fresh yes. lemon. Food. Well, to most That's people, food. I'd be yeah. like, ooh, the yeah. whole face puckers up. Well, yeah. if, you, if we bring up our children with those bitters, with those, yeah. they're not going to know the difference. Yeah. No. You know, no, sometimes yeah. even my son complains that a dried prune was too sweet. Yes. And he put it down. Like, know, like yeah. oh, that yeah. date is too sweet because the dates yeah. down here are amazing. Oh, I bet they're delicious. Oh, oh, <laughs> Corin. <laughs> well, no, that's the best. I thing. need if to send anyone, you up if, a pack. <laughs> oh, listen. Yeah. So, anyone that has a sweet tooth, this is what I. If you have a sweet yes. tooth and you're craving something sweet, just go grab a date. That that'll take care of that in two seconds. But but it's not even that. It's about texture. It's about that. Yeah. That Creamy. jelly donut. You yeah. know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's delicious. It's so good, right? And and you're fine. But people would rather, like you say, go for the jelly donut, yes. even though the date is the real fast food. Yep. The real fast food in our society is grabbing an apple or a carrot or a date. Yes. That's the real fast food. Yes. Yes. Not the chips in the bag. Correct. Correct. Yeah. And and it's 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 very interesting. And I do believe it's it the the there is a huge paradigm shift that's happening. And it yes. has been happening for the past at least 10 years, by the, for the past decade. And it's yeah, actually you know, coming more and more to the surface. Do you know why that's it's, happened? People are tired. Um, <laughs> people are no, tired. There, of that. No, it's, it's, it's deeper than that. There's a, there's a global food shortage. 
Ooh, and yeah. all of the uh, uh, the problems in Syria right now, if you were to dig into it, it, it comes down to uh, uh, farmers were allowed access uh, to aquifers that knew Assad and ruined all the small farmers, and that started the revolution. Mm. With the food cart, uh, when the prices went up in Tunisia, that started a revolution. All of this, all of the problems that we see right now that we call uh, racist, intercini, or, or uh, religious, internecine or religious are all caused by uh, food uh, mm. food shortages and increase in the price mm -hmm. of oil um, yeah. and the increase in the cost of production of food. When when half the planet lives on less than two dollars a day, um, you know, as I said, we're in the first class cabin on mm -hmm. Spaceship Earth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm right with you on that. Very yeah. good well, it's point. hard. It's hard for us. What what Corin doesn't talk about, she's kind of the Oprah Winfrey of the Sunshine Coast here, <laughs> and uh, you go, so girl. <laughs> she's been uh, she's been feeding people um, at the food banks, uh, the church we, dinners, anything that we can do to uh, we do. to help out. Mm -hmm. uh, we get back in, to the community our, a lot. In our community, a lot. Yeah. It's and, very important. Uh, we don't talk about it because people from around the world buy the cereal. And what do they do is they found out we gave it to the food bank locally and not their food bank, right? But there's yeah. only so much you can do as a small company, and uh, we're trying to do it right. And if everybody did what we did, I think that uh, the world would be a better place. I absolutely agree with you, and I, I think that's one of our models here at, at uh, Yoga Hub is it's uh, collaborating as a village yeah. to make yeah. the change. Everyone yeah. has their strengths. We come in with all our strengths. Yeah. Whatever there is, we share. Whatever yeah. the crop is that we have, we share. Whatever yeah. strengths and, and everything, yeah. we share. And, and yeah. I believe that that will make a huge shift on this planet. Um, and absolutely. I mean, to be able to, to share, you know, a percentage of what is coming in to give back to community. It is community yeah. that has made us. It is community yeah. that has made who you are. Yeah. You know, and bravo, yeah. bravo to the two of you and to live by such wonderful ethics and morals. It's wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. We've been, been well, very you. lucky. And thank you, Yoga Hub and Christina, for this. It's been... It's That's been, been a real pleasure. Yeah, it has. You know, we were... Yeah. Corin was, oh, God, another television interview. But you guys, it's not <laughs> no. another television interview. No. It's, it's really people who are sharing the journey. Yeah. Well, Thank you. Well, we, that's uh, our goal. Our goal is to just raise awareness and consciousness. And, and to every company that has such an incredible product, that, to me, the story yeah. behind it and why. Yeah. why. I mean, we know how hard it is to get something going. Yeah. Yeah. Why yeah. the blood, sweat, and tears, you know? Yeah. And, and, yeah. The, and I know that, that we've only touched the tip of the iceberg today. I, yeah. I really do know that. And, and it's been um, such a wonderful journey um, to hear of all the different areas that you have gotten yourselves you know, into. We're so lucky. Your, your vision continues to expand out there. Yeah, it's a joint, it's a joint vision. We're one of the few people that have co-CEOs. Dorothy yes. is, is yeah. in with us as well. We run the company. It's 99% women. So it's a very different kind of um, business. Well, as uh, I deal with the healing arts world and uh, 15 years ago, um, a core of the mentors were even saying it's time for the feminine energy to come and take yeah. place yeah. because yeah. That's, that's where the nurture, the love, you know, the gifting yeah. and the gratitude begins. Nothing. I mean, this is in no offense to any men. It is just the way our society has been brought up, you yeah. know, where poor the you men have had to carry such, <laughs> you know, a lot to be the breadwinners yeah. to, you know, it's a whole exactly, cultural yeah. societal situation that we had. Yeah. So now the shift is beginning to take place and the collaboration and the balance of male and feminine and masculine. It's, yeah. it's a really beautiful shift. Yeah. And, you know, I think that women are able to deal with it better than men as well. Uh, from the numbers that I've seen in the States <clears throat> because things are things are tough down there and times are hard. Uh, the women are more flexible in terms of being able to deal with it, and the men are more rigid and are having great difficulty dealing with change. Mm, mm. And and I think it it the balance of the two and the strengths yeah. of the two come together. You know, it's, yeah. it's really lovely. Yeah, it's so what, lovely. They look at the two of you. It's I know. fantastic. It, yeah, yeah, but we're in separate cool. rooms, right? So. <laughs> It's only for the moment. Uh, <laughs> this works well. I mean, that is mum's the word. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Oh my goodness. Now, um, you were saying that your you, yesterday when we had a little chat, you were saying now your cereal is in how many countries? Well, we, what happened was that uh, we were so lucky in November 2009, we ended up in the Granville Island market, which might not make any sense to anybody, <clears throat> but the 2010 Olympics were two months away. Oh, let me tell so, everyone, the Granville, uh, Granville Island market is uh, the farmer's market but, in Vancouver, Canada, yeah, yes. Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, where they had yeah. the Olympics, they held the Olympics there. So, yes. oh yeah. boy, they, I'm sh you, had, you yeah. had your cereal there. So we had yes, 50,000 yeah. 50, people a day uh, came through. One day we had uh, Chinese New Year's, Valentine's Day, and the Olympic torch all came by our booth. Now, I'm writing a, <laughs> I'm writing a little book yeah. about this. Uh, we paid $35 a day for a rental table, and we did 10000 in sales. Bravo. Yeah. Okay. So that's that the money. That's yeah. the money that funded this business. But Corin yeah. <clears throat> got up at 4.30 in the morning and started work. Can you fill that in, Corin? Yeah, I used to get up, um, but you know, when you're going through all this, you don't really think about it too much. It's just something that you that you need to do. I'd get up early in the morning, get on the, uh, load up the car if it wasn't done the night before. Load up the truck, go to the market, stand all day long from seven, because customers would start arriving around seven thirty, eight o'clock. Even though the market technically wasn't open till nine, but people were there at eight o'clock, mm -hmm. and go right to seven o'clock when it closed, and then at seven o'clock then. Sorry head out for your, um, then I'd stay in a hotel and I would do this three days a week. And then the rest of the time, come back here and make the cereal. Yeah. Well, I did oh, that for you were several still years. hand making it. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh my yeah. gosh. And you know what? Our <laughs> cereal is still made by hand. Huh. The, product, yeah, the majority of the, of the cereal, the seeds, not so much now, but the fruit itself is still made by hand. It's still mixed by hand. The cinnamon That's, that we yeah. add to it. That's why when All we up. mix it by hand, you have those whole cranberries. Yes. Yeah. It's a, not a machine cutting them. Right? No, it's not. Yeah. No. Oh and, my um, gosh. Yeah. Yeah. So corn so really paid her, paid her dues, but <clears throat> from you know she started with a hundred and twenty nine dollar investment. Yeah, that was it. And her company's, her company's been appraised at between uh, twelve and thirty million dollars, depending on uh, on who you talk to and how valuable it is. Bravo. Yeah. yeah, bravo! So we're we're just going, we're just getting into the states. But what happened here is that when people saw it on the television show, they called the stores, and the stores called us. In right. the U.S., it doesn't work that way. Yes, you you wait. Uh, we've it's eighteen months in the approval process with Whole Foods, for instance, and you have to go through all. It, it's a top down business in the U.S. They don't. They're not responding to that hundred mile local diet in a way that no. they that they that they can. And there's, it's still big business in the food business. Yes. It's still 75% of what you buy in the supermarkets controlled by four or five companies. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, we're hoping to carry it here Oops. at Yoga Hub. So, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. thank you. Uh, I have plans. Uh, yeah, plans. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. Yes. Well, yes. you know what? The other, the other thing that we've never talked about publicly, and this will be the first time, is that um, in terms of feeding it to animals, Mm -hmm. that um, wealthy people are feeding our cereal to racehorses because uh, they run yeah. faster. Yeah. So if it's good for a racehorse, it's good for people. So that they can be in the stands rooting on their horse and going, holy crap! What a great idea. That horse ran fast! What a great idea. Get a horse called holy crap! Uh, yeah. That would be brilliant, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Feed it to uh, it's the chia. It's the chia. It's really good. Yeah, and a lot yeah. of people feed the chia to their um, pets as well. Their cats, dogs, yes. gives them uh, so, shiny coats. So they're healthier. Yes. What, um, what we're told is the vets are yeah. using uh, vets, chia yeah. seeds, uh, the yeah. gel into pet food, and it's getting rid of mange, hot spots, um, some um, again, some. Brian, it's back. Have. It's back yeah. to the diet. Have you seen what they put again, in oh, the, our, our animals' foods? Oh, well, they're less you know, regulated, so nuts. they can actually change <laughs> faster. But yeah, they're they're I, I think they're marketing to human beings when they say you got it. <laughs> it's a pet, you know, yeah. and uh, it's yeah. really a. Here's the research that we did. People reject paying seventy five cents a serving for our cereal, but they'll pay a dollar seventy five for a yes. serving for their cat. Yep, you're, yeah. you're absolutely right. It's it's yeah. ridiculous. So, yes. Yes. so yeah. uh, friends of ours take better care of their animals. I think you said men take better care of their cars, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 
Yeah, because in the end, it's going to cost so darn much to fix it. Yes. Have you seen the yes. vet bills? <laughs> oh, vet bills, see, I know. You all they're, have they're socialized just, medicine up there. Yeah, You have socialized medicine. You know, yeah. You're quite well taken here in the U.S. Uh, that's why the shift of eating better and eating right and taking care of oneself is so great now because of the medical system here. Well, yeah. It's very the, costly. Yeah, your medical was, system's scary. Really. Yeah. What was really um, interesting yeah. is that... Um, I had to go in and have a kidney stone removed um, surgically oh. uh, a month ago. And um, I had to go back in and get the stent taken out. And the surgeon was talking to me. And he knows about our business success and everything else. He said, oh, we'd be great if we had this new ultrasound machine here. And I said, well, how much is it? He goes, it's 200 grand. And I said, $200,000, where am I going to get that? Right. So he says, that's what it, that's what it's going to take to do. And he said, if you were down to Mayo Clinic in San Diego, it would have been 250 for this operation. Right. Yeah. Yeah. $250,000. Yes. yes. Yeah. So he wasn't far wrong with saying, Hey, can yes. you guys, so we're going to contribute to that machine, but, um, um, uh, you really, it's just, it's, it's amazing. Isn't people it? have to take care of themselves. Yes, absolutely. You know? yeah. absolutely. That's so, where it begins. It begins at yeah. home. It begins with oh, us. Oh yeah, definitely. You're right. So, yeah. That's like charity. There it you go. At home. You got to take care of yourself, your home, then your community, and then you can go forward. There you go. <laughs> yeah, right with that's you. right. Yeah. Well, it's, and and it's so lovely to have um, you to speak to the two of you. You we're so aligned in so many ways uh, about creating yeah. the change out there and yeah. uh, creating the awarenesses and the consciousness of people and making help make the change. Hopefully, you know, at least laying it out there, and they can make their own decisions. Well, yeah. Christina, you've you've really helped uh, motivate us because uh, this is a break for us to talk to you. Yes, uh, it is actually. Normally, you Very know, pleasant. we're fighting it out. Yeah. We're fighting it out with Goliaths in the cereal aisle, the salt, yeah. sugar, fat, caffeine, and chocolate guys. <laughs> yeah, for okay. sure. So yes, this, has been a real, wars. this has been a real pleasure. We get our competitors yeah. go in and say, we're going to knock holy crap off the shelves. That's what we're going to do. So we have yeah. that kind of aggressiveness at the ground level. We don't do that. We don't slag any of our competitors. There are people out there, if you can eat chia seeds, eat them. Right? Yeah. But they've got to understand there's 30 different varieties of chia seeds. Some are better than others. Some are older than others. What mm -hmm. corn does is she keeps the highest quality seeds available. We use mm -hmm. the freshest yeah. crops. We don't wait three years to use the seeds. No. Fabulous. Yeah. Fabulous. yeah. So. Oh, very exciting. Well, thank you so much thank to you. both of you thank for you. taking the time. <laughs> yeah. I wish I was doing a live interview up there at Seashell, believe me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. Uh, it's paradise. Oh, if you yeah. Look we'll yeah, we'll get, and we'll I really want to put that here. on there that it was made in paradise on the oh. Sunshine Coast because it yeah, is paradise up here. Yes, it's yes. Beautiful. The Sunshine Coast is, is truly that. And, and the sun is shining much more up there these days, I hear. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the rain is good. We, you know, we like our yeah, rain. The, but, you, yeah. need, you need the rain. You need a balance. Anyway, of thank you course. so much. Uh, or, or British Columbia wouldn't be as green as it is with all that that's wonderful true. oxygen. You know, you do yeah, need that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you so much. And, and we look forward to having continued conversations with the both of you yes. and keep up yeah, and definitely, you know, sure. bringing you back in a little while or even in a, one of our roundtable forums that we have. It would be lovely to have you participate. Yeah, just That'd get a great. hold of Dorothy. She runs our lives. Okay, I'll know <laughs> Dorothy. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, thank you, thank so you so much, Brian and, and Corinne. Thank you. Thank you for your time. And I would also like to thank our Yoga Hub team for making it all possible um, and to each, every, each and every one of you for joining us in this new platform of education and information. We're grateful for your continuous support and look forward to hearing from your feedback on how we can serve you better. We invite you to join us live on Tuesdays for Magical Medical Tour at 10.30 a.m. Pacific, 1.30 p.m. Eastern. Wednesdays for Trinity of Life at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, followed every other week with Flowing into Awareness with Anatara. And we always encourage your feedback and uh, suggestions. Um, and call in to our wonderful number, 818-LET'S-TALK. 818-LET'S-TALK. We look forward to seeing you again. Until next time, namaste.
We learned in our past past, in a different lifetime, in a different time that was passed down from generation to generation. And as science has evolved and we have become more aware of quantum, mm -hmm. our ancient work is acknowledged. So here is the future of science in holographic quantum physics mm -hmm. being able to define what we do.